Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're creating a mini monthly calendar directly in Procreate. So what you see on screen is exactly what we're going to be creating together. The color palette is free as always. Just tap on the link in the video description and you can download and install it. We'll also be using several different brushes from my Font Lovers Procreate brush set and I'll leave a link in the video description to that as well. We're going to start by creating a brand new canvas that's 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels at 300 dpi. I do work in the display p3 color profile but if you're on an older iPad and don't have access to that then the default sRGB color profile is perfectly fine I've got my brand new canvas all set and the first thing we're going to do is lay out our calendar that way we can manipulate it and adjust it and then we'll add in everything else around it so in order to do that we're going to utilize our drawing guides so I'm going to come up here and hit the wrench go over to canvas and then toggle on drawing guide and down here hit edit drawing guide so after Everything is fine exactly as it is. The only thing I'm going to change is the grid size. I'm going to change this to 75. So I'm going to hit done and I'm going to thicken this up a little bit so you can see it better on screen. And I'm going to make sure that my guide is nice and dark. Okay, once you have that, hit done. And now that we have this, now we're going to lay out our calendar. And what we need to remember is that we're going to have the top column be all the days of the week. And then you have to have at least five rows underneath that to accommodate different length months throughout the year and having five rows will always accommodate any size month that you're working with. I'm going to be creating a generic calendar that can be adapted for any month of the year. So just a heads up about that, I'm not doing any specific month for this. So now that we have our guide, we're going to figure out where we're going to place everything. So on this first layer, this is just going to be, I'm going to call it my guide layer because I'm going to put some marks on here just to help guide me along as I'm laying everything out. And I'm going to just grab black that way it's really easy to tell where this is. I've got my Font Lovers brush set all loaded in and I'm just going to grab the round marker brush to help me out right here, but you can use any brush out of this. This is just to guide us. When we created our grid size of 75 pixels, that gave us 20 squares across. And since we already know that we have seven days of the week, we can accommodate every single day of the week with two squares right here. So that would give us 14. And if I have 20 across, that leaves me with six left over. So I can have three on one side and three on the other side. So so I can come in three right here and I can come in three right here. So now every two will be a day of the week so I can mark those off. And now I also know that I need five rows beneath my days of the week. So if my days of the week are up here above this line, now I can go every two squares I can have a row and I need to make sure I can accommodate five of them. For me, it's really helpful if I have the lines actually drawn in. I'm going to reduce the size of this brush that way it's not too distracting when I'm drawing everything. So if I draw this over and then just hold it until it snaps, now I can get some straight lines. And this really helps me as I'm putting in all of my numbers and my days. Now that I have my grid all set right here, I can start populating it and I'm going to reduce the opacity of this so it's not super distracting as I'm writing it in. I just need to be aware of where these lines are. So I'm down to like 20%. Okay, so I'm going to create a brand new layer right above it and this one I'm going to label days. And the color of this is going to be my darker yellow color. It's almost a gold, so it's this third one right here. And I'm going to be using my round marker brush for this and it's going to be a little bit larger because I want these ones to be nice and bold. So I'm coming up to 6%. So in here, I'm going to put in my days of the week. So I'm just going to write these in. And for me, I personally prefer using the letter R to represent Thursday. It's what I've always done. Um, I just don't like having two T's right in the middle. So that's my own personal preference, but obviously it's your calendar. Do whatever you would like. So I tried keeping the line down the center of all of these. So I usually just take a peek at them and make sure I think my Thursday just needs to be toggled over just a smidge. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so once everything feels good, now we can move on to our numbers. So I'm going to create a brand new layer and I'll just call this numbers. And the color of this one is going to be this dark blue, this royal blue. And I'm going to reduce the size a little bit. That way the days of the week are heavier in weight than the actual numbers to show a little bit of hierarchy on our calendar. So I'm going to bring this down to 
4%. And for all of these, I'm just going to write it right where the crosshairs are right here. So I'm going to just start number one on a Monday. Once again, this is just a generic calendar. Once you have all of your numbers in here, I also do a, a really quick check to make sure everything's feeling a little centered. I think my 22 is a little bit off, so I'm just going to toggle that over. It's a little more centered. So once that's all set, we can toggle off our guide layer, and we can also turn off our grid. We no longer need it, so just come to Canvas and just toggle off the drawing guide, and now we can see our nice calendar, exactly how it looks. So what I like to do is group these two together because this is our calendar, so let's group them. And we can just label this one calendar. And then I like keeping a copy of this. That way, if anything gets shifted along the way, or if I don't like the size that I started with, I'll always have this at a nice large size that I can reduce down later. All you have to do is make a copy of this and turn off the visibility. It's really easy to always have this one in our reserves if we ever need it. So I'm going to drag this over to the left, hit duplicate, and then just toggle off that reserve copy. And now we're good to go. So with our calendar, we're going to scale this down and put it right in this corner, and then we'll build everything else around it. So with your group selected, we're going to grab our cursor, make sure uniform is selected down here. That's really important. That way everything scales proportionally. And I'm just going to grab a corner node and drag it down until I'm happy with the scale. And I don't want to go too small, but I think that's a pretty good size. And I'm just keeping it down here in this lower corner. And I think that's good. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is drop in the name of our month. So I'm going to create a brand new layer and just label this one month. I'm going to hand letter this out, but once again, if you prefer to use typeable text, you can do that too. I'm going to use this dark blue color again, and the brush that I'm using is my Jittery Ink Brush. I love using this one for lettering. It's nice and opaque, but still has that rough edge that looks like it's ink. And obviously I'm making a generic calendar, so right here you would write whatever month you're actually designing for. So the next thing we're going to do is just finish this all off with some decorative floral elements. You can change up the color or the style for whatever month it is. These are really versatile, which is perfect for a project like this. So I'm just going to do some really simple flower buds since we spent a lot of time creating our calendar itself. So these ones are just going to frame the rest of our calendar. So we're directing the eye straight to the name of the month and then the calendar itself. So I am going to create a brand new layer and this one's going to be called stems. And the stems of these are once again going to be this royal blue color, but we're going to switch over to the mono marker brush right down here. And the size of this is 12%. And I'm just going to add in some really simple stems right here. They're going to come up at a curve and then they're going to have a few stems coming off of them. And these ones are just going to be for the flower buds themselves. And then I'm also going to add some for the leaves. So for the leaves, it's going to be once again a stem and then the leaf is going to come down but not hit the main branch. And then for these ones, it's just a really simple sketchy style. So all I'm going to do is draw some additional lines in the leaves and just leave it like that just to give it a little bit of volume. So I can add another one right here. And I'm just going to come around and keeping in mind, these stems are where my buds are going to be. I'm just going to fill it out with some leaves. Okay, once you have your leaves in there, let's move on to our buds. So I'm going to create a brand new layer. This one's going to be called buds. And we're going to start by creating them with our light yellow color and then we'll add a little bit of depth with our gold color afterwards. So these are once again really simple. You're just going to draw an oval and then same thing we did with the leaves, just draw additional lines. I like leaving some gaps in it so it does maintain that sketchy feel so that style is consistent throughout the whole piece. Okay, once you have your flower buds all done, the next thing we're going to do is add some details. So I'm going to create a brand new layer, label this one bud details. And for this, we're going to grab our gold color. And right at the bottom, we're just going to draw some simple lines up. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do is add just a little bit of detail to the very top. So I'm going to return back to my dark royal blue color. I'm going to reduce the size of my brush from 12% down to 6%. 
and just put some little lines up at the top. Okay, once those are in, the last thing we're going to add in are some solid colored leaves that look like they're in the background a little bit, so they're going to be a lighter shade. I'm noticing that I could probably use an extra leaf right here, so before I do that, let me just add that in. I have my dark blue selected still, and let me bring my brush size back up to the 12% we were using for those leaves, and I'll add in an additional one right up here. We're going to come down here and underneath the stems layer, so above the month layer, we're gonna create a brand new layer and label this one solid leaves. And we're going to grab the lighter blue color for this and I'm going to switch to my smooth pencil brush down here. And I'm going behind these main leaves. So this is just going to come up and be attached and scribbled in. Okay, and if you wanna add in any additional ones, I also like adding some in that are just by themselves. So these are a few good places to put those in. So the next thing we're going to do is frame the rest of this by having some come down from the top. So we're going to come back to the same layers that we've been using and add them in. So for our stems, I'm going to start there first switch back to my dark blue, switch back to my mono marker brush, make sure we're still at the 12% size so everything feels consistent. And now these ones are going to swoop in. So I'm going to have one long stem that comes like this, and then the other ones are going to swoop in the same direction. I'm always keeping in mind when I draw these that are close to my lettering how big my bud is. So for this one, it feels a little bit tight. So I'll just erase a little bit away to accommodate that space for the bud. I'm going to erase this one back a little bit too so they're not the same height. So I'll zoom out and make sure that I don't need to place any others in here. And I think that's pretty good. I don't like how much white space I have right here. So I think I'm going to bring this one up a little further and this one up a little further too and that should be good. All right, so now I can drop in some of those leaves. Don't be afraid to crop elements off of the, the sides. It'll just feel more full that way. So I actually like having a few elements that bleed off the top or the bottom. All right, always make sure that you zoom out and take a look at things before you proceed to the next step. That way everything's feeling really comfortable. I am noticing that I have some visual tension right here, two elements that are going to end up really close together and be distracting to the viewer's eyes. So I'm going to erase this one back just a little bit to interrupt that. All right, let's move forward. So we're going to come up to our buds layer, come to our yellow and draw in our buds. Okay, and now I'm going to come in and add those details to our buds. So I'm going to switch over to my gold color. Make sure that you switch to your bud details layer when you do this. And once again, I'm just going to draw those little lines up. All right, once that's done, don't forget to add on the little top details. So for that, we're going to return back to our dark blue color and reduce your brush size back down to that 6% size and add them in. And then the last thing we have to do is add in those solid leaves up at the very top. So make sure to head on to that layer, grab your lighter blue color and switch your brush to the smooth pencil brush. So I've just finished all of my elements up at the top and you can see it's really nicely framed up here, but I'm noticing I have a lot of white space right here that's actually really bothering me. So I'm just going to go in and fix that by adding an additional stem right there with all the other elements. So I'm going to just speed up the video for this part because you know exactly what I'm doing. That feels much better to me. And if you want everything to be just a little bit more organized, all you have to do is group those flower layers together. 
I like having a crazy organized file. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to hit group and then just label these ones flowers. Okay, and then the last thing I wanna do is just nudge my calendar over to the right a little bit because there is some tension right here that I wanna take care of. So just make sure your calendar is selected in your layers palette and then grab your cursor icon and all I have to do is nudge it over here and that feels much better. So that's how to create a mini monthly calendar directly in Procreate. Once again, links to everything mentioned in this tutorial are right in the video description. So just tap in there and you can have access to everything. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this one in the future. For more Procreate tutorials and freebies, head on over to my site, every-tuesday.com. You can also find me over on Instagram. My handle is every Tuesday. If you try this out and post it there, I would love it if you tag me. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.